Tanya stood behind Madison, feeling both awkward at being present for such a scene and bewildered by Claire's actions. I've seen a lot of crazy things, she thought, but this one takes the cake. Letting yourself into your ex's house the day after his wedding and making yourself at home is a new level of ridiculous. How could she possibly think this was okay to do? She glanced over at Madison to see how the woman was taking it. If this had happened to her, she would have wanted to resolve the matter peacefully. But she doubted her new friend would feel the same way. Ian was frozen with his hand still on the doorknob, his eyebrows raised almost to his scalp and his mouth hanging open. At that moment, he didn't need to turn around to know that his wife was furious. Her anger was so palpable, he could practically feel it in the air. Before he could come to his senses and figure out how to react to such a bizarre situation, Madison had already taken a step forward. She looked calm on the outside, but the smile on her face was tight and didn't reach her eyes. What are you doing here? She asked through gritted teeth. After taking a few more steps and glancing around the apartment, she got an idea. She turned around to look at her husband and said, Ian, I don't think this is appropriate. Claire is your ex-girlfriend. How could you hire her to do your housekeeping? At that, Ian closed his mouth and narrowed his eyes, wondering where his wife was going with this. Claire looked offended by the assumption. However, she didn't seem to know what to say, and she looked back and forth between her ex and his wife with uncertainty, still holding the platter of food. Madison turned back to Claire and raised an eyebrow as she gave her a cold smile. Although she was usually timid when it came to relationships, she had no intention of letting someone walk all over her. She wasn't afraid of a lot of things, and she didn't let difficult situations bother her for long. After all, she had to deal with horrible rumors about herself for five years, and had carried on with her life as if nothing was wrong. That day, however, she couldn't look past Claire's behavior. She had to put a stop to this nonsense before it escalated even further. Tanya, come in and sit down. Since Claire was kind enough to make us dinner... You're welcome to eat here with us, Madison said as she waved to Tanya to beckon her further inside. Tanya felt she had no choice but to stay for dinner. Besides, no matter what was going on with Ian, she wanted to support Madison. They had connected very quickly, and she felt enormous sympathy for her situation. Madison didn't care about Claire's reaction at all. I don't even care what Ian thinks right now. Did he know about this? How did Claire know when we would be here, she thought. All she knew was that there was a raging fire engulfing her heart. If she didn't vent her anger somehow, she thought she might burst. She and Tanya walked over to the dining table, and she stopped on the way to grab the platter out of Claire's hands. The table was already set with plates, silverware, and wine glasses for two, causing her smile to get even colder. Madison looked at the salad and sides that had already been laid out, and felt annoyed at how elaborate it all was, and how delicious it all looked. But she still pretended to be calm as she started to pile food onto her plate. When Ian walked over and pulled out a chair, she felt her anger rising again, and she said, Ian, didn't you say earlier that your stomach was bothering you? Maybe this isn't the best food to have at the moment. Her husband froze, his hand still on the back of the chair. After a moment, he hesitantly sat down but he didn't reach for any of the food. He wasn't sure how to respond to his wife's mood just then. She looked up at him and smiled as she added, You know, this all looks very rich. I don't know how well this will fare with your stomach. Why don't you call the griffin and ask them to send some food over? Turning back to her plate, she picked up a forkful of one of the sides and took a bite, making an unhappy face in response. Meanwhile, Tanya looked as if she was about to cry. She had no idea how to act in this situation. This may be the most awkward I've ever felt, she thought, wishing the floor would open up so she could escape. Madison took a bite of the roast and frowned. Without waiting for Tanya to try it, she said, This is way too dry. I think it's overcooked, and the meat seems old. This would definitely not sit right with Ian. With that, she stood up, carried her plate over to the kitchen area, and dumped her food into the trash can. 
Claire opened her mouth in indignation, but before she could say anything, Madison picked up the salad bowl and emptied that as well, saying, This lettuce is wilted. It's probably expired. She kept going back over to the table, taking a bite of one of the dishes and disparaging it as she threw it away. These potatoes are way too salty. I feel thirsty just looking at them. This pasta is undercooked. I can hardly even chew it. These wine glasses aren't even clean. It looks disgusting. Less than three minutes after she had sat at the dining table, all the food was in the garbage. Tanya was still holding a fork in her hand, but the table had been completely cleared. After Madison was done, her mood had improved, but that cold smile was still on her face. At that moment, she seemed to notice Claire, as though she had forgotten the woman was there. She did a double take before she put her hand over her heart and said, Wow, I'm so sorry you heard all of that. I didn't think you'd still be here. In my experience, after the food is served, the help usually goes to another room. She looked remorseful on the outside, but internally she felt proud of her strategy. If Claire is going to make this difficult for me, I'm going to make it even worse for her. She'll regret ever setting foot in this apartment she thought. Regardless of whether Ian was happy to see Claire or angry, she wasn't going to let the woman push her aside. Claire stared back at her, looking dumbfounded. She bit her lips and turned to Ian with an aggrieved look, as if Madison had just threatened to give her a beating. Ian watched his wife's actions, amusement creeping into the complicated mix of emotions he was feeling. He gazed at the furious little woman, and while he knew it was a serious situation, he couldn't help but think, she's so cute when she gets all worked up like this. The last time he had seen her lose her temper was when his hand had gotten injured. He had been amused by that as well, but he felt his affection for her rising as he studied her. Without waiting for Ian to speak, Madison walked over to stand right in front of Claire. She raised an eyebrow and said, I apologize for my rude behavior, but please understand that I'm just looking out for my husband. I can't sit by and let him eat poorly prepared food. Claire gaped at Madison, tears welling up in her eyes as she glanced between the woman in front of her and her ex-boyfriend. Madison lowered her head and laughed lightly as she continued, I hope everything is going well for you. If you're doing housekeeping work, you must have fallen on hard times. She leveled a serious look at her and added, you probably want to be more careful with how you present yourself to the world. If you keep this up, people might think you're not as high class as your family says you are. At that point, Claire could no longer keep her tears from falling. Tanya nervously glanced at Ian, whose face had gone neutral, so she couldn't tell what he was thinking. She was afraid that he would be infuriated and lose his temper at any moment. Determined to drive her point home, Madison took out her phone and called Diana. As soon as the call was answered, she said, Hi, Grandma. Is Mrs. Thompson still there? If so, could you send her to Ian's apartment to pick up Claire? She's crying, and I think I may have upset her. She decided at that moment that she and Ian wouldn't live with his family anymore. That way, she didn't have to worry about what they thought of her actions at that moment. Ian stood up and came up behind Madison placing a hand on her wrist. Finally, he wasn't able to keep his face serious any longer, and he smiled at his wife. Claire was frozen in disbelief and humiliation. While she had never had preferential treatment from her family, she had always been allowed to do whatever she pleased. Others had always tried to suck up to her, either because her family name or because they thought she was attractive. She had hardly ever suffered embarrassment in her life let alone anything on this level. When she saw Ian smile, she went up to him, put a hand on his arm, and sobbed as she said, Ian, how could you let her talk about me that way? She's gone too far. Ian shrugged off Claire's touch and wrapped his arm around his wife. He turned to Madison and asked softly, Darling, are you hungry? Why don't I have some food sent over while we wait for Mrs. Thompson? His reaction stunned the three women who all stared at him like he was a stranger. Madison blinked in surprise, but a moment later, she blushed as a soft smile lit up her face. He was just watching the show, she realized, 
he's not happy to see Claire at all.